Welcome, one and all, to the mystical world of Felbar. Adventures abound throughout this realm, and we appreciate the opportunity to regale you with some stories from these trails. These accounts are all based on actual RPG experiences that occurred within Adventures in Felbar. Some of these tales may be for mature audiences, while others may be for very immature audiences. We now present the sage Mikas Tumo from Tamel, also known as the Bard of Felbar. Welcome to Session Fartuk-60. Last time on the Bard's podcast, the group discovered that the veil had been burned and the explorers, who were spotted earlier, had died in an apparent humanoid raider attack. A search of the destroyed campsite revealed a hidden entrance disclosed after the fire had consumed most of the fauna. We rejoin the group as they peer into the darkness below. Anything? asked Fargus Stoutar. The mage and bard each peered into the darkness, but reported no movement, just ash on the old stone stairs which curved around to the left. The group circled up to discuss their options. An air of excitement took the group as each realized that the dungeon had probably been hidden from view for years and may hold a great deal of wealth. Karina spoke up about the horses not being able to scale the narrow stairs, and Bulger pointed out that humanoid raiders had been present earlier as well. The group discussed both points and noted that each had merit. It was finally decided that Cabe, Lady Irena, Sister Elaine, and Fargus would venture into the depths, while Bulger and the Waif would stand guard above ground, and then the group would switch out as everyone was excited to delve into the unknown depths. Cabe was quite concerned as there was no cover to speak of, and advised the two newer members to make sure they yell down the stairs at the first sign of trouble. The pair nodded in understanding and began to survey the landscape. Fargus and Sister Elaine seemed skeptical of the lack of illumination as the elves had the ability to see in darkness. It was decided that Cave and Lady Irena would lead and go several yards in advance so that the torchlight carried by the humans wouldn't interfere with their special vision. Fargus pointed out that the pair would be shadowed with the light behind them, but both agreed that the risk was worth it at this time. A torch was lit, and the ranger nodded to the mage, who quickly made her way down into the old stone passage, followed by the bard. Moments later, the pair of human beings began their descent, and heard the mage call out that it was safe and that she had found something. Fargus, with blade in hand and torch in the other, along with Sister Elaine, stayed close behind. As the pair reached the bottom of the stairs, they found themselves in an old antechamber. Cabe and Lady Arena were kneeling over an arrow-filled body that was badly burnt. A close inspection showed that the corpse was probably one of the explorers who dove into the underbrush to get away. As the fire consumed the foliage and the wooden door that hid it, the body tumbled down the stone stairs and landed in a heap at this location. As the bard checked the burnt remains, he found a piece of silver jewelry and a partially damaged leather-bound journal. The others surveyed the antechamber and found a single wooden door against the wall. Warping of the wood was obvious, but a thick coating of dust indicated that no one had moved the door in quite some time. Hmm, muttered Cabe as he leafed through the old notebook. The group inquired what he had found, and the bard explained that the adventurers had come to this location seeking out a tomb of an old warlord. As he leafed through the pages, he was able to discern that the tomb was said to be in this general vicinity. It seems he found what he was searching for, right before he died, mused Cabe Silvertongue. Pargus had been listening to the door, but had heard no noise from within. The far wall appeared to be the site of a cave-in, and did not appear passable. The bard announced that there was nothing else of note on the charred corpse, and that they could continue. A simple latch was discovered on the door, but as Fargus attempted to open it, the copper bent in his hand and broke off. Looks like we'll have to smash it down, pointed out the large human. A discussion broke out about the noise it may create, but the ranger pointed out that the lack of dust disturbance indicated to him that there were no signs of life beyond. Convinced at his perception, the others stepped back as the ranger braced himself before charging at the door. Sister Elaine held the man's torch in one hand and her mace in the other. 
Fargus took a few steps back and lunged, throwing the weight of his large frame against the door, which smashed into pieces, sending him into the room beyond. Cabe, Irena, and Elaine each followed quickly with their weapons ready for any threat, but observed nothing but spider webs. Fargus had crashed through the door and into a large box and was covered in spider webs. As he quickly brushed the silky strands out of his eyes, he pulled his weapon out and prepared for battle that did not come. The illumination from the torch showed that the group was now in a rectangular room covered in wooden boxes and spider webs. A yell from the stairwell inquired if they were okay. Cabe stepped out of the room and yelled up to Bulger and Karina that everything was fine and thanked them for asking. He returned to the new room and discovered that the box Fargus had hit had contained expensive glassware that was now ruined. Several boxes were present in the storage chamber, as well as another door leading out to the right. Torch sconces were found, and the old sticks were quickly illuminated with the aid of the group's torch. Dust-covered boxes were found, and the group quickly began to open the containers to see what they held. Fargus took up a position at the new door and continued to wipe the strands out of his face and hair, but to no avail. At one point he lit the thick billowing strands, causing the webbing in the room to ignite and burn quickly, clearing the room. Hey, watch out, complained Lady Irena. You could have set the room on fire. The ranger sputtered out an apology for his rash actions and continued to pull strands off of him. He inquired if the group had discovered anything, but was saddened to hear that it was all basic supplies. Sister Elaine did report finding several flasks of oil and a lantern, which was far superior to their torches, and Lady Irena located a cache of wax-sealed wine that may fetch some coins back in the city. As Fargus struggled with the thick webbing on his face, Sister Elaine suggested he return topside and send one of the others down. You constantly brushing your face isn't going to be helpful at this point, she remarked. The ranger was initially miffed at the suggestion, but he continued to spit and wipe and eat greed and went upstairs with the box of wine. As he returned above ground, he nodded to Bulger, who headed down with the rest of the party. Eagerly, the squat gnome bounded down the stairs, whereupon all of the members of the group heard him exclaim, Hey, there's a dead guy down here! We close out this episode now and give you our thanks for listening. Please subscribe to this podcast and don't forget to follow us on Twitter at The Bards Podcast. For everyone in Adventures at Philbar, thanks for listening.